We present your county informational tape service for NFO meetings in March. Devon Woodland, president of National Farmers Organization, was a panel member at an NRECA convention at San Francisco recently. That's National Rural Electric Cooperative Association. Hard times, hard choices was the, the theme of the panel. Former Ag Secretary Bob Berglund was the moderator. Besides Woodland of the NFO, there was Frank Naylor, who was Under Secretary of Agriculture in charge of the Farmers Home Administration. Devon, what did you say on the panel? Well, Phil, I was uh, directed to deal with agriculture and its future, and that is that rural America is in serious trouble, and that it is not confined just to the farmer and the rancher, but it deals also with the suppliers to farmers, it deals with the farm credit people, the banks, the PCAs, and also the people up and down Main Street. There's been a 300% increase in bankruptcies in rural America since 1979. And uh, the uh, survey that Senator Huddleston made a short time ago in a broad area, and he's a ranking uh, member of the Ag Committee, the Senate Ag Committee, and his poll indicated that 17% of the farmers and ranchers would not be able to service their debt in 1984. And my point was, is that rural America is not recovering. What did Naylor say to all this? He simply got up and quoted statistics as far as FHA is concerned, uh, that such a small percentage of the total of loans in FHA were placed in a bankruptcy atmosphere. What he failed to recognize is, is that there were those who voluntarily uh, liquidated, and that also in rural America there's somebody besides FHA. There's production credit, there's federal land banks, there's local banks. And so when you look at a combined uh, atmosphere in rural America, the problem is serious, and he refused to acknowledge that. And if his attitude permeates through the whole Department of Agriculture, that is that uh, rural America is uh, living in prosperity, there's no problems out there, I think that's one of her problems. How did you respond to Mr. Naylor? I just simply said, Mr. Naylor uh, suggests that we've got prosperity in rural America, and I invite him to travel with me and meet with farmers answer questions for them and convince them that they're living in prosperity in relation to the rest of America. What has to happen? We must recognize that agriculture must be paid for its goods and services, but it should be designed with a profit structure if the people in agriculture and rural America are to maintain that important element in our society. Devon Woodland, after addressing the NRECA convention at San Francisco. Among farm organizations, cooperation. Devon Woodland has been calling for it ever since he became president of NFO. Recently at Nashville, the American agriculture movement adopted a resolution supporting collective bargaining. Today, let's listen to the vice president of AAM, Corky Jones, as he spoke at a meeting at Grand Island, Nebraska, attended by the Grange, the NFO, the AAM, and the Farmers Union. Corky Jones. The NFO this evening is going to introduce the concept of packaging grain together, marketing in blocks, and we are encouraging you to be a participant in that. We have tried our own marketing operation within the American Agriculture Movement. We worked on it for three or four years, and just recently we are now negotiating with NFO to let them handle the marketing. They have had years of experience. They have made some mistakes. We're going to gain by the mistakes they made, and they are on the right avenue. We in the American Agriculture Movement fought this for about three years, and we weren't getting anywhere. So we are working with the NFO on this concept, and I am assuring you that the American Agriculture Movement is working hand-in-hand -hand with NFO and the Farmers Union, I'm sure there's going to be many, many other organizations. After Corky Jones spoke at Grand Island, Jack Cruz of Here's Info interviewed him. The American Agriculture Movement uh, talked about uh, coalitions in the past, or is this something new for you? 
We have talked about it probably more than most any other organization because we've realized the fact that we've got to have unity, and so we've been in agreement with anyone that is uh, after a price and realize that a price is the salvation of agriculture industries. Real happy when uh, we had a coalition effort and a promise between the NFO and the American Agriculture Movement at our convention with the promise and a resolution coming out of there that we would work together to obtain a price and with the collective bargaining concept that you folks have and our concept of working on legislation and our PAC and we believe that we can really be beneficial to each other. With the collective bargaining uh, plus uh, your knowledge that your organization has, do you think we can make this block work? I absolutely do. I think uh, we've got a lot, uh, lot of people. Uh, I know your organization has got a lot of people and we're scattered clear across the green belt and the production side of it and, and I see nothing but positive uh, things happening out of this. In addition to a talk by Corky Jones, vice president of AAM, there were statements by Neil Oxton, president of the Nebraska Farmers Union. Let's hear what he said about cooperation with NFOs, collective bargaining. The history of NFO since 1955, when they came on as a militant, aggressive group, they were going to prove they could do something. Well, they've gone through the ropes. And I tell you what, we aren't going to lead Farmers Union in that endeavor. We're going to throw in with them, and we're going to try and help them get the job done. Thanks very much. Jack Cruz of NFO's Here's Info was at the Grand Island meeting. He talked with Neil Oxton following Oxton's speech. With the unity that was requested, uh, do you think we'll get enough grain to be have an effective block? I certainly do. I, th I really feel a sense of urgency among these farmers. I think they understand that we have to pull together on this thing. And I think there is, there is a unity of purpose. Uh, we did, uh, a couple of years ago, prove that we can pull together and, and do something for the common good. And once again, that's the challenge. And I think farmers respond to those sort of challenges. Are there other realms, other areas that we might work together in? Yeah, I certainly, certainly think so. Uh, you know, like in this state, uh, we work together a large part in the state capital. Uh, you know, they, they really don't say, is this an NFO farmer or American ag farmer that's going to affect? Heck, it's a farmer it's affecting. Maybe your member, maybe our member. And it comes down the same. And then nationally, obviously, we've got to work together to come up with a uh, 1985 farm bill that's going to do something for agriculture in the long pull and do something to keep the family farmer on the land. But are there any other realms that we might touch uh, that would make us uh, stronger as farmers per se? Well, I think that's uh, basically the thing that we've got to understand is that farmers aren't competitors amongst themselves. That guy down the road isn't our competitor. You know, we st I think we started way back in kids in school, or maybe it's the 4-H programs and the FFA programs and those things that make us think that that fellow is our competitor and uh, that we need to beat him. No, that's not true. We need to work with him for the common good of all of us. Neil Oxton, president of the Nebraska Farmers Union, talking with Jack Cruz of the NFO. At Aberdeen, South Dakota recently, the Mid-Dakota Pork Producers presented their annual Pork Challenge Day, a seminar, trade show, and banquet. Merle Sunken, director of the Hog Division of NFO, was one of the speakers addressing the sessions. We have an interview with Sunken, conducted by Paul McDonald of radio station KGIM Aberdeen. What did you talk about? What did you touch on with the producers today in the marketing? Hog producers are in such a changing world as far as the way that we're producing hogs today and the size of our uh, operations, uh, the management behind our operations, and try and get across the fact that we have to use every tool available in the hog industry today, such as forward contracting as one of the number one tools in order to lock in a cash flow for our hog operation, in other words, lock in some type of a profit in future to come instead of trying to gamble and, and uh, work with the daily markets. How can you organize hog producers? I mean, what incentives do they have to go in with a group of 
Well, I think the main thing is is to lay out all the facts to the hog producers of what's going on in the industry as far as uh, major corporations taking over the packing industry and pointing out to the individual hog producers and they're very rapidly seeing that they can't go to the marketplace by themselves anymore and say, you know, what do you give me for my hogs? Because of the changing industry, we have uh, more, more and more people all the time are doing uh, uh, programs and, and selling of their products on long-range programs under contract. Merle Sunken, director of the hog division of NFO, interviewed by Paul McDonald of KGIM Aberdeen, South Dakota. Pork Challenge Day an annual function presented by the Mid-Dakota Pork Producers Council. We had a good conversation with Elmer Hotz of near Bangor, Wisconsin. He puts his livestock through the Toma, Wisconsin NFO collection point. He's a quality operator with a wide reputation. He told us that by going through the Toma point, he gets 50 to $60 a head more than if he went through locally quoted markets. We started by asking, what kind of animals do you ship? My cow cows and uh, steers, beef steers, uh, beef and Holstein. I have been doing a pretty good job up there. Have you been going through the Toma Point very long? I've been going through there since it was established, and that's approximately 15 years ago. Wonderful. Now tell me what kind of experience you've had with it. Do you like going through the Toma Point? Well, I feel that I've been, I've been treated uh, right. I get uh, a good price there. I've been getting anywhere from, oh, five, six cents over my local market. And I feel it's really worth that. Do you think that collective bargaining is a good idea from your experience with it? I think collective bargaining is the only way to go. We're going to have to do it. We can't rely on the government to do it for us. I'm kind of intrigued at what you said about that collective bargaining is the only way to go because we can't rely on the government to solve the problem. Tell about your perception of the condition that agriculture is in right now. Well, right now I think we're in a very poor position. As they, with this milk program, they say that we should eliminate a few more farmers. Well, we've eliminated three million of them right. in the last 20 years, and our prices haven't gone up yet. Good point. So I don't think that the uh, government is going to do us much good. We've got to do it ourselves. Elmer Hotz of Bangor, Wisconsin. He ships through the point at Toma, one of 21 points in Wisconsin alone. He also noted that he gets trust-protected checks and accurate weights and grading. And now here's Rick Avila, Vice President of National Farmers, with an assessment of the likely sign-up in the government's new dairy diversion program. The preliminary reports from the ASCS on participation in dairy incentive program are in, and it appears that the cutback in production will range from about 4 to 6 percent. If these figures hold true, a lot of work will have to be take place in the next 14 months if government purchases are to be below or near the 5 billion pound milk equivalent levels. In order to avoid a disastrous 1985 farm bill, the dairy farmers must get together and change the direction they are headed. Production must move out of its present channels, that is, to the government, which will send a clear signal to the dairy industry that business as usual will not be tolerated. Dairy farmers not participating in the government program must also try hard not to increase their production during these next 14-month period also. With increased participation in the NFO self-help program, a real return to dairy farmers can be accomplished. Rick Avila, Vice President of National Farmers. We have presented your tape informational service for March meetings. Compiled and edited by Don Mack, head of the radio division. I'm Phil Allen, and that for this month is something to think about.